Hey, August Block here again with another installment of my preparation for the Ultra Endurance Cycling event, Paris Brest Paris, that happens in August of 2023. So it's Thursday afternoon, and I realized on Tuesday that I'm really going to have to log a lot more miles than I'm logging, even though I'm hitting, hitting it hard five or six days a week. Uh, I'm going to, I need to do some more long rides. So I decided that this Saturday, I'm going to go up to Central Florida, and I'm going to do a solo 400K. It'll be the same 400K that I did for the Brevet series, but I, and also it was part of the 600K for the Brevet series. It's a great route, you know, really low traffic all through bucolic Central Florida. Um, nice, nice, nice scenery, nice environment. But the real reason I really I want to hit this one particularly is because about 100 miles in, I start to hit rollers. And then it just rolls for like 125 to 150 miles. It, believe it or not, Florida actually has hills. They're not huge. But I think this is probably the only elevation training I'm going to be able to get before August 19th when I fly. And I can expect about 25,000 feet of gain on Paris, Brest, Paris. So I really need this, this kind of... Uh, training right now so I'm going to go on Saturday morning try to do it in 17 to 17 and a half hours I know it's not that fast I'm not a fast rider I told you some people will do those in like 14 or 15 hours but my 400 K's seem to be around 17 to 17 and a half hours so I'm gonna try to hit that I'm gonna follow the route I'm gonna stop at the same controls I'm gonna fuel up at those controls and uh, I'm also expecting it to be 90 degrees and a good bit of wind. So this is going to be a serious grit ride. And that's really what you want if you want to toughen yourself up and get ready for hardship. Uh, so let's go ahead and get ready. just arrived so it's not a bad room I've stayed here a few times but none of the rooms have been this nice good deal for 79 bucks all right I'm just gonna run over to this little Mexican place called Don Pepe's and get something to eat come back try to crash out as soon as possible okay here we go Don Pepe it's good So I just ate a Don Pepe's. 
That place is fantastic. If you're ever in Dan Allen, you gotta eat there. Talk about carb loading. Yeah, but it was delicious. This, this like vegetarian plate was like a chalupa, a chili relleno, and a enchilada with beans and rice. It was an amazing. And it's super cozy in this like little tiny old craftsman house. Yeah, love it. I didn't film in there because it seemed like it was kind of rude. So now I'm just walking back to the hotel. I'm going to crash out. It's around 5.30 now. So if I can get to bed by like 8, that'll be great. I'll get up at 3.30 and then I'll be on the road by 5. All right. All right. It's about 4.15 a.m. I already brewed my own coffee because this place doesn't come with a coffee maker. So that's great. I might as well be from the 50s. I always bring like a chock full of nuts, coffee, and my own percolator to <laughs> all these events. Okay, so let's just pack up and try to roll out of here in the next 40 minutes. Okay, it's I'm a little late getting started here. It's 526. I'm leaving the hotel now. I just got I wanted to leave at five, but I got hung up on that mold in my water bag. It was really troublesome, so I just kept scrubbing and scrubbing. I don't know, I don't know if I was gonna have some kind of allergic reaction or something, the mold black mold in my bag, so. There you have it, but I'm off. I always love it starting in the morning like this. It's so quiet, calm, there's nobody out. So yeah, just super. All right, well, let's get riding. It'd be fun to log a few miles in the, um, in the dark here. stop for a couple minutes and then just head right back out but I want to check in hit the route step off the bike for a second and then roll again All right. all right I'm just sitting here at the first control I'm only going to stay for a second. I don't think I'm even going to go into the shop. I haven't used any supplies. I've only had two sips of water. Weather is still really cool. Uh, sun's just starting to come up over the trees. And I'm holding at about 18, 19 miles an hour right now. It's really cool. It's going to get hot, hot later. So I'm just going to take advantage of this moment. Uh, but I'm going to head out. All right. Let's go ahead and uh, keep pedaling. The more you pedal, the more territory you cover. Now the sun is really up, still cool, super nice, 
this is where you really get to enjoy Florida. I need to embrace this time because once we hit around 11, 12 o'clock, it's gonna get hot. Right now it's still super cool. It's starting to open up here a bit too. Probably get into pasture lands in the next hour or so. Okay. about 36, 37 miles in. I'm gonna have my first nutrition RX bar. I had a good sized burrito this morning before, so that's kind of a long time to wait. But I carb loaded the hell out of it then. myself at Pepe Don's last night, or Don Pepe's, and then this morning I had another burrito, so I'm pretty good. But seems like the timing's right for some nutrition. From now on, I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna have more nutrition every 45 minutes. Just about to 50 miles here. That would be nice. Be under 200 at that point. Let's take a look at this scenery. Just hit 50 miles. That's great. So under 200 miles to go. I also just turned on to Nature's Coast Trail, which is just probably some of the best riding anywhere. It's this part of it is 20 miles, canopy covered, no cars, all through the countryside. It's really just one of the best spot flat. It's flat. You don't get that very much. And right now, it's, I mean, you get flat in uh, Florida, of course, but riding everywhere else, you are always gonna get some hills, right? But this is just flat, the temperature is perfect, tons of shade, so optimal conditions right now for the next 20 miles. This up, I'm gonna give you a shot of this canopy now. When I was growing up, one of my best friend's parents were like second parents to me. And then when I finally left home, 
you know, went away, went to college, did all that stuff, and I hadn't seen them for like decades. I was on this route about three months ago, and I randomly ran into them out in the middle of nowhere in the country in Florida. And uh, morning, and they told me that they do this walk on this trail, this nature's coast trail, and they've been doing it every morning for 14 years. So I did their throughout again for the 600K and I ran into them. So I'm hoping that this morning, I got a little bit of a later start, but it would be really great if I could just run into them again, <laughs> randomly out here in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Let's see. Coming up on patrol number two. Unfortunately, I didn't get to see my friends. They weren't out there on the trail. I must have, that late start I got, must have, uh, I must have just missed them. That's too bad. <laughs> Another funny thing though is, I was, the only soap I had to clean that mold out of my water bag was the hotel shampoo sample they give you there. So I used that, but apparently I couldn't, didn't rinse it all out, so having shampoo electrolyte water now. I'll have to clear that out when I get to the next stop. <laughs> okay, coming up here on control to number two, 68.2 miles. Alrighty, I gotta get this uh reflective gear off it's really hot it's starting to warm up and i'm going to hit those rollers soon so i'll make this a quick stop just re uh, refill my water bottles and head out I'm only about five miles out of the second control and I've been slightly climbing the entire time and, and I can see now that the wind's picking up so I've been at a headwind and the sun's rising and it's heating up so I think this next four or five hours is just gonna get incrementally tougher I'll, I'll check back in when these rollers start uh, and that's gonna be come, gotta be coming shortly. Okay, see ya. Okay, we're 
coming up here in the third control at 97.8 miles. The heat's starting to crank up. I'm still feeling okay. Have not hit the rollers yet, so probably have about 25 more miles before the rollers kick in. But I'll stop here and uh, fuel up and uh, keep rolling. stopped and now it's super calm and quiet there's no wind the road I'm on is really smooth I feel like I need to whisper because it's just so peaceful right now great time of day you know that smell right after it rains it's just like all the pine trees and stuff One mental strategy that I use when I'm doing ultra endurance cycling is this idea of punching through. And uh, I, don't, I don't know where it came from. I think it's borrowed from martial arts. It could be Bruce Lee or Mr. Miyagi. I don't know where I heard it. But the idea is that you're not focused on your target. You're focused beyond your target. So that when you actually hit your target, you have maximum force still so applied to endurance cycling like today I'm doing a 250 mile ride a 400k but mentally I'm telling myself it's a 600k a 375 mile ride and that that, it, that helps me mentally because almost all of ultra endurance is all mental it's overcoming that that time the uh, the discomfort, the exhaustion, and when uh, when you're shooting further than your actual goal, mentally it just makes it a lot easier to get to your goal. So there you have it, punching through. Alrighty, I made it to control three at 170, what was it, 173, 73.5 miles. That was a long stretch from 98 to 173.5 without stopping. That, also, that's when the heat and, and the hills started. Uh, I'm still doing pretty good, but definitely the like endurance element of this kicked in the last 75 miles. Uh, so I'm going to stop here and enjoy one of these bad boys. Uh, it's so good. It doesn't last very long for energy, but it's so refreshing. Uh, and then my chain dried out because I used white lightning dry instead of wet 
I got hit with some rain. That's a lesson because it's actually lube is on my on my list, so I uh, left it off. But that's all right. And the only thing they have here for me is <laughs> some 10W40. So I'm using 10W40 on my chain. <laughs> Seems like overkill, but yeah, there it is. Alrighty, so I'm leaving Control 3 at 173.2. 75 miles roughly left to go. Final stretch. Let's do it. are getting incrementally steeper. I can start to really feel them here at the end of the day after 200 miles. All right, I'm down in my granny gear now. Just gonna have to chip away at these babies. All wrapped up. Whew. So that was not easy. That was a tough ride. The last 50 miles of hills were increasingly challenging. Uh, but I felt strong in the end. I probably could have gone further if I, if I had to, or if it was a longer ride. But there were some definite learnings on this on this ride the big one i think was that when it rained i did not use my chamois butter which is for buttonhole and so my butt became super chafed and it was really painful luckily i had the lidocaine with me that saved me completely so the last like 30, 40 miles was really painful. Uh, thank God for the life gain. The other piece was, you know, I had my chain. I did not put the right lubricant on it for the weather. Even though I did look at the weather and I knew that it might rain, I put dry, white lightning dry on there instead of wet. And then I had to end up using 10W40. It worked, but it is disgusting. It picked up so much dirt so i left that out i had totally enough nutrition i never had to buy one f thing of food the entire trip and uh all i did was buy water in that one starbucks double espresso so i didn't make my 17 and a half hours because i was filming and that really delayed me but i think my pace was better i have to go and verify that but i was I came in at 15, 252 miles, averaging 15.87 miles an hour. 
and I think with those hills, that's pretty good. I think I was under 15 on my last ride, so that's an improvement. But still a hard ride. I've got still got a long way to go to get ready for Paris, Brest Paris. Thanks for coming along with me on this. Have a good night.